What's up everybody? It's Opex, back at it again with another video. I'm drinking a coffee and I'm going to be talking to you guys about something important and hopefully you guys get a lot of good information out of it. I'm not here to bitch, but this is a topic that really irks me and it's something I'm very versed, well versed on. So of course it's something that I definitely want to deliver to you guys. Maybe it'll help you in your daily life. Maybe it'll help save someone's life. So today is a beautiful day in Rochester. It's actually a little cold. I'm, I live in Rochester, New York. Um, it's a little cold out today than usual, so I decided to make a video. Drink a hot coffee, make a video, and I'm not gonna sweat profusely this time. So let's do it, shall we? Drink a little bit of this coffee, let me gather my thoughts, and we will begin. I'm gonna try to make this a very short and sweet video. Get to the point. Um, if there's anything I leave out in this video, feel free to, you know, ask. Uh, maybe I can make a whole video on whatever topic you want. Uh, just let me know. I'm very open, and uh, I know I'm losing a lot of subscribers. I assume that's because people believe that, you know, I'm out of the trucking industry, so what use am I, right? We, I've never been a trucking channel, first off. Um, never have been, you know. The, the few content videos on trucking that I had was like four or five videos, and it was all updates on basically my life. Now, I'm in the medical industry, right? So I'm in a whole different type of industry than I was last time. What does it matter where I work? This is a philosophy channel. But in this video, I wanna discuss a lot about the medical industry, because it's something I've been working with uh, for the last year and a half or so. Um, it's something that I've been learning for over a decade, about 12 years, I've been studying what doctors know, what the medical industry knows, uh, you know, how your hormone balances go, whatever, right? Everything to do with everything. Um, you guys probably already know this. I have a, um, a weakened heart. Um, I got scar tissue, I got heart disease, etc. right? It's something that I was born with. I was born with a very, very inefficient heart. <laughs> um, and progressively a lot of you guys know my story so I don't have to dive into it and I want this to be as short as possible but I just want to tell you I'm in the medical industry um, and there's a lot of things I want to expose now this isn't new to me it's except how do I put let me let me gather my thoughts because I'm, I'm everywhere right now so let's uh, gather my thoughts and we will put this in a very structured manner oh it's a beautiful day today So, I'm in the medical field, and I've been doing a little bit of training this week. Now, in my field, I do yearly training at this point. Um, so, I'm redoing some training, and the training that they're trying to bullshit me with is straight-up bullshit. It's, it's a lot of promoting the medical industry instead of helping people. I know you guys don't know the difference. So... The medical industry creates customers. They do not create cures. If they put you on a plant-based diet, they never see you again, right? You'd go, if, if they told you meditate, diet, exercise, lay off dairy and sugar, and, and then you go out and you're cured, you're never gonna see that doctor again, because why would you? you? That's why it's not a healthcare industry or medical industry, it's a sick care industry. It's getting you sick and making you a customer. A customer for life, you know, they, they never give you something that's going to make you feel better. They always make you something that's going to make you worse or dependent. So when I was a kid, this is a good place to start. When I was a kid, I would, not a kid, but like when I was 14, 15 years old, and I was working at a supermarket, our local supermarket called Wegmans. And I worked there for like five years, but during that period, there was a lot of times where my lips were chapped especially during the winter time. So I would buy chapstick. Buy chapstick, put it on every day. I would always keep a tube of chapstick on me. Hmm. Hope you, hope you guys already kind of figure out where I'm going with this. Because I'll, I'll give you a few examples. Because I'm going to have to. So the medical industry creates customers. Hmm. So I buy this chapstick every day, chap lips every single day. Hmm. What's going on here? Instead of fixing the problem, 
I am using chapstick to moisten my lips and to make my lips not chapped and, and, and uh, dry. So one day, I didn't have chapstick. I stopped buying chapstick for whatever reason. I don't know why. And I never bought chapstick again. Huh? But don't you have chapped lips? No. When I was a kid, I realized that the chapstick kept making me more chapped. It kept making me buy more chapstick. Right? And when I was a kid and I realized that, like when I was like 16 probably, when I stopped using chapstick, I realized, oh my God, how many more things are like that? So I realized where the medical industry was doing things. Uh, like if you have a headache and you took an Advil or Tylenol or an acetaminophen, well, guess what's going to happen to you later that week or even the next day? You're going to get a headache again. Why is that? Hmm. We're going to keep going to this, but I think you guys already know what's going on. So I'm doing my training. And uh, yesterday I was doing some training and I was doing a lot of, uh, you know, treatment of low blood sugar people, diabetics. Uh, let's go there. Let's go to the diabetic stuff. So this is stuff I already knew. So I can call out the bullshit and I can call out the, the real industry for what it is. They're training me to say, okay, well, this person's diabetic because they have high blood sugar. They eat tons of sugar. And if their sugar drops to a certain amount, you got to give them insulin. Uh, you need to regulate their insulin even if they have low blood sugar. So if they have low blood sugar and all of a sudden, and you need it higher, you give them you know, their levels of insulin. Now, that's good in theory, right? But here's where the problem aligns. Same thing with that chapstick, right? So if you're feeding unnatural amounts of insulin into the body, your body's not breaking it down properly. Your body's not producing this thing properly, right? They fail to, to tell me this during my, my training and during my tests. So I have to get tested from this and I need to pass that test, right? And I have to say, well, yeah, if, if they're low blood sugar, I got to give them more sugar and more insulin. Um, if I'm unable to get to insulin, I, I got to give them more sugar. Or if I if they're uh, high blood sugar and you want to reduce that sugar amount, instead of actually doing the thing to fix the problem, they create a customer where now this person's taking insulin the rest of their life instead of weaning off the coffee or, or coffee, uh, let's say ice cream or cake or whatever the problem is, right? There's sugar in everything. Instead of buying a coffee without the chemicals, you know, I buy coffee, I buy the drug, I want the caffeine, I want the drug, but I don't want that, the chemicals. I don't want the cream, the dairy, the, the, the sugar. I don't want it because it's not good for you. It's going to get you inflamed and create diabetic problems, right? And because I know that, I, I take my coffee without the cream and sugar. I'll take the drug and I know that the drug itself is bad, but I want the drug. I don't want the cream and sugar, you know? Anyways, so that's the point that I'm getting at there is that they are training me and testing me, making sure that when this person has low blood sugar, I have to raise that blood sugar, um, which is not essential to that person's needs. In fact, we are creating something that's um, unbalanced in that person, putting artificial things into that body in which the body is supposed to be producing naturally, or at least in natural terms. rather than being injected. Uh, if you have low blood sugar, they're training me to feed you a Coca-Cola or a Gatorade. And this is doing nothing but the opposite effect. So, let me explain it. I, I think I'm not explaining it simply, so I'm going to explain it simply. If I give you insulin, that's going to prevent your body from producing insulin from the glucose or whatever the the, the sources of sugar, but they're training us to just feed you more sugar, 
which or 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 to inject you with insulin, which is affecting your hormone balance and it's affecting you. Now you're going to be having to take this every single day. Now, of course, this works with everything in the medical industry, and it irks me. Uh, there was like some of my my training videos. I was because I'm doing it on my phone because I'm an independent contractor. So because I'm doing this on my phone, I was thinking about just recording it all and showing you guys like, okay, so they're telling me in this situation, I need to be putting pain uh, meds to this person. Let's go to that. Dealing with someone with chronic pain, right? That's, that's another area of expertise I have. Dealing with chronic pain and curing chronic pain because I cure my customers. I don't create customers. I cure my customers. Right? That's the difference between me and the mainstream medical industry. If you come to me, I will fix you. If you go through the medical industry, you are now a customer for life. And it might be a short life. All right, so chronic pain. The thing they're trying to teach me is that chronic pain, you need pain meds. No ifs, ands, or buts. If you have chronic pain, instead of fixing your chronic pain, we're putting you on pain meds. And there are symptoms that arrive from chronic pain. This could be depression. This could be anger. But here's the thing. How they're describing it to us is that this person's going to be already on medication because they're in the industry. So when I'm taking care of this person, I have to be feeding them more drugs. These people are more apt to be more angry. No shit, you're on pain medications. Of course you're going to be more angry or unbalanced when you're not on your pills. You take your pills, this is what they're training me. If he's angry or she's angry, I need to be throwing them right on those that pain meds. And they'll be a lot easier to deal with. What? This is what they're telling me and quizzing me on and testing me and making sure I pass these tests that I give these people pills to treat their chronic pain instead of treating their chronic pain, which is generally through, like I said, if you took out the sugar and the dairy from your coffee, you won't get inflamed. Inflammation will go into your joints, causing pain, <laughs> you know? And then we call it chronic pain and put you on pills, keep you on the dairy and sugar, but we'll add those pills, never fixing you. Why am I talking about this? So, it's not that it irks me about the medical industry. I've known this shit for years, and I've been talking about it on my channel for years. So what's different in this video? So I want to talk about population control. I have two videos, population control part one, part two, and it took me years to make these videos. I literally, in the truck, tried making that population control video countless times and it kept going two to three hours long three four hours long and i wouldn't even get half of what i wanted out and i realized how hard it was for me to make that population control video because it was so important to me now in in those that, those population control videos i describe how the medical industry is not designed to help us and prolong our life. It's designed to restrict our quality of life, not to guarantee it. Right? So a lot of people are on are handicapped, like they're in wheelchairs or whatever, right? And they're fat and they're way out of shape and disgusting. There's a video on YouTube. I wish I can probably give you the, the link in the description, but I might not. <laughs> it sounds like work to find the video. But there's a video on YouTube where this guy, this uh, he's probably 50 years old. This guy was told by his doctor he ain't gonna walk another day in his life. So get in the, <laughs> get your wheelchair, get strapped up. That's you for the rest of your life. This guy didn't want anything to do with it. He was already on those uh, those walkers with the hands where you're walking with and it's strapped into your uh, wrist. And he's already walking like that barely. Well, after weeks, after months of working and working and working, he didn't give up. He walks to this day now. He was told he wasn't going to be able to walk. 
And there's tons of stories like that on YouTube, in real life, that you know. Two. So, let's look at it like this. There's somebody that uh, was diagnosed with cancer and was told by his uh, or her, uh, I guess, doctor. I don't know if it was her doctor or a special doctor. Could have been a radiologist or something. But they told her, you don't have much longer to live. You've got six months to live or three months, whatever it is, and you're going to die. And we, we need to zap fry you with radiation immediately. She didn't. She switched her diet to a vegan diet. And surely, six months later, her daughter asks her, while she's tending out into her, her garden, her new vegan garden and her new vegan lifestyle, and she's just happy out in the sun, getting her vitamin D, breathing in oxygen. And her daughter asks her, didn't that doctor tell you you were gonna die three months ago? And she said, yeah, I just switched my diet and I feel great. It killed the cancer. Because guess what? Your cancer can only thrive if you're putting it in those environments. This would be that glucose and sugar and those chemicals that create cancer cells or viruses. Viruses create zombie cells, which is very similar to cancer and is often misdiagnosed as cancer as well. So why am I talking all this shit about the medical industry? Who do you go to for help? You go to yourself. You fix your diet. You, you try to mimic nature. This is how you fix yourself. A fudgicle or popsicle. Does this exist in nature? No. Don't eat it. Period. Now, tea in, in that form doesn't really exist in nature, right? It's brewed and that's high temperatures and that's hot water. But we've been doing tea forever and juicing forever. I'm not going to say that you should be away from the juices, but other than the juice thing, if it's not in raw form, don't eat it. <laughs> it's plain and simple. This is how you cure yourself. You don't need to go to a doctor to put you on a pill. That pill created a customer. It did not cure you whatsoever. It disrupts the chemical and hormonal balance that you have producing naturally. When I was in the truck, um, I tested myself on uh, testosterone pills. So I started taking testosterone pills for a week. And my levels of testosterone were so high, it was imbalanced. It was improper. But then I put, I then got off of the testosterone pills, and I realized what it did to my balance. The reason I took higher testosterone is because I was in the truck. I was eating unhealthy. I had low testosterone when I was in the truck. And I weighed over 213, I weighed 213 pounds. And I told myself, I need to work out. And it's hard for me to work out if I'm working 20 hours a day. But if I'm in, back into a dock, I want to be able to do push-ups right then and there and have the energy to do it. So I was taking testosterone pills about 50 minutes before I packed into a dock. So I would do, and this only lasted a week or so. Maybe a week and a half, maybe tops. Until I realized the disruption in my balance that I was going to be producing less testosterone on my own. Which is detrimental. Just like that chapstick. As light as that chapstick is. If I keep using chapstick every day, I am now a customer to chapstick. My lips are going to be chapped because my body's not going to be naturally moisturizing that area. Because it's too moistened. So it's going to keep that area dry. This is what your body does naturally. Okay? So when you're on pills or pain medication to treat chronic pain, but you're still inflamed, what are you doing? You're only harming yourself and getting high on drugs, affecting your heart and, and, and your relationships with your, your family and your friends. What are you doing? This isn't healthy. Now, this is a the medical industry in its entirety is population control. This is not designed to help you. It is not. It is designed to hurt you. It's designed to take your money. In the cancer industry, it's well known that it's designed to take as much money as, from you as possible in the short amount of time that they're going to put you in that industry. 
the cancer industry is big, big bucks. It's like a hundred thousand dollars a treatment or whatever it is. It's fifty thousand dollars a treatment. It's fucking ridiculously expensive, and it's designed to hurt you. So again, we're going back to the cancer cell. How do you stop your cancer cell from producing? Well, you get it out of that cancerous environment. So why would you put radiation therapy on top of that? Why would you create more cancer? Well, it, it kills the cancer cell. It doesn't. Cancer is a zombie. Cancer is not alive. So you need to get out of that mentality. It's like a virus. When a virus infects the cell, it becomes a zombie cell. You can't kill that cell. So get out of that mindset of them brainwashing you on that bullshit. Your body takes waste. This would be that cancer cell. Waste out of your body naturally. Why would you add more cells to take out? Why don't you just take out that cancer and get it out of there instead of continually reproduce that cancer with sugar and radiation, whatever, right? Just doesn't make any sense unless you're trying to profit or unless there's a population control agenda, right? Those are the only two reasons you would have to make this medical mafia the way it is today. So let's dive into this. Population control. Why do I keep saying that? Medical malpractice is the number one form of death in the United States. What? I thought cardiovascular disease or cancer or, or traffic accidents was the number one form of death. No. Medical malpractice is well known to be the number one form of death in the United States. You most likely know somebody who died of medical malpractice, even though it wasn't said to be medical mal malpractice. It could be surgery. Surgery didn't go right. It could be my uh, your pain medication finally got uh, caught up to you and killed you. This is medical malpractice. It's the number one form of death in the United States. But if you went to somebody like me, who's going to treat you organically, get you to uh, produce these things on your own, like your hormone imbalances, your sugar levels, to produce this on your own so your body can be at its greatest peak version instead of the medical industry. Now, nah, we'll get you, we'll get you uh, not walking, get you cancer ridden and disease ridden. That's the medical industry. And now you trust them with their PPE me as well on PPE, which is obviously stuff I already know. Obviously, I made a video the other day about it, <laughs> uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, about why you shouldn't wear masks. So I'm quite versed on it, right? So they want us all wearing masks, and you're believing the medical industry, which is the number one form of death for you and your family. Um, I've been saying this for years. I don't know if I've said it on my channel, but I assume I did. But most of you guys probably never caught on to it. I look at the medical mafia as the modern day Jewish gulag showers. Seriously. That's how I view it. The reason being is because they're putting you in an industry you don't understand. And it's designed to poison you. Get you as a customer. This is a profiteer scheme. Now, it's not just for profit. It's designed to kill you. It is designed to kill you. If you have a headache and you take a pill, you're probably going to continually have headaches because you didn't fix the problem. And when you take uh, a drug, what it does to your body is it produces what it needs to to make you feel better or at least not think of the problem. You know, it, it numbs your mind. When it's numbing your mind or numbing your idea of what that is, you're going to continually eat that sugar. You're going to continually uh, do those things that are creating the headache in the first place. Everything in life has cause and effect. Everything. There's no such thing as an effect without a cause. You need to have a cause to have an effect. Now, if your effect is a headache, what is the root cause? What is a cause for a headache? Sugar levels. Boom. You just had a uh, too much sugar. It could be the day before. It could be disrupting your hormone levels and your sugar levels. And it's creating an imbalance. Um, it could be that you haven't exercised in a while. And you haven't been able to, to uh, 
transport the necessary oxygen and blood to your brain. And you might, it could be of so many things. It could be a tumor on your head. It could be so many things. But going to the cabinet and grabbing a pill did not fix shit. It has created you buying more pills because this is going to continually happen. Doctors know this. You're trained, like I'm saying, I'm being trained every year for this. And it's stuff that I've already known because I studied this for so many, for over 12 years. I studied virology. I studied uh, the ins and outs of the cancer industry. That was the big one. Uh, but the biggest one I, I needed to know is the effects on the heart. To understand potassium, you know, potassium is potash. You know, it's not, it's not what you think it is. It's literally set something on fire and then grow something using that ash. Now that thing has potash, potassium. Potassium is great for the heart. Potassium is great for a lot of things. But the point is, it's not just some, something that's just in bananas. It's a reason it's in bananas, right? But you need to understand and, and, and realize where it comes from, the potassium. It came from burning fields and then growing bananas on top of that and cloning your bananas on top of that, creating more potassium in that produce. Not exactly sure why I brought that up other than the more you know, right? You can't just say the, 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 uh, this person had 10 years of training in this, therefore, no, they're training me for this shit as well. They're training me to give you drugs and to, it's crazy. It's crazy. They're training me to kill you and to keep you a customer under the medical mafia until death do we part. Is that fucking great? No, this is terrible. Now, is it, uh, you know, am I taking a Jew by the ear Bring him into the showers and unleashing that radiation? No. But it's very fucking similar. It's very fucking similar. It's the number one form of death in America, let alone the majority of the world. Why? Why do they want you sick and docile to control you? You're going to have less money. You're going to have less health. Isn't that the goal of them? What do you think that they want from you? Money. Your control. Your brain. See, if they control you and keep this in an idea of there's a proper medical system and you have to do things by the book, everyone's going to be on pills. Everyone's going to be sick. But if I told you Let's diet and exercise. In fact, I'll be your personal trainer through this whole thing uh, just for a couple days so I can show you a regular routine. You stay in that regular routine, get off your your TV. Instead of being on your TV, go swimming in your lake or something. You know, something productive, something that's helping you, moving that blood around. Um, and how much that will change your life. But people want a pill. It's so much easier. Ah, oh, Doc, give me a pill. You get what you put your money into. What you put your money into will inevitably continue. See, if you didn't pour all your money into it, and it wasn't part of the government regime agenda to be linked with the medical industry, not just for profit, but for control. This is the modern day gulag. They don't need to put you in a labor camp anymore. You are a free range slave. You are too dumb to think of this on your own, that's why you need people like me. You need people like me to expose the medical industry, to expose the evils of them. If you're t if you're hurt and you take if some if you're choosing to go to the hospital for whatever reason or go to your doctor, it's your fault. You're choosing that. You're choosing to hurt yourself. Every single time I've been to the hospital, the ER, and yes, I've had many heart problems. I even had a heart attack, and uh, during those processes 10 years ago, when I had heart, very, very, very bad heart problems, I would go to the ER, clenching my chest, 
hoping that they're, they'll help me. They will uh, fill me up with fluids and potassium and then say, here's a $5,000 bill for keeping you in a cot waiting for you to die. They want your money. They aren't helping you. For if they did, you would never be sick again. Now, being sick is normal. I don't want to dive down that rabbit hole. But I'm just trying to explain to you, the medical industry is not designed to help you. I really wish I can articulate that a little bit better. But they're not designed to help you. They're designed to, your doctor, to have a second home, a third yacht, uh, a fourth Porsche, because the third one was not the newest model. It was last year's. So the point is I'm getting at is that there's tons of money in this industry, but they're designing this industry to murder you, to keep you sick and docile and broke. Doctors rich, customers broke. Why is that? Hmm. How many millionaires do you know that go to the doctor? In fact, fuck it. Do you know anyone who goes to the doctor regularly? They're always in pain. They're always sick. They're always not doing good. Doc, my back. Doc. The... Doc should say, I'm not putting you on a pill. Fuck my money. I'm here to help you. I don't want to put you on a pill. What we're going to do is we're going to find out the root cause of your back. I'm going to travel around you all day, and I'm going to be whispering all the bullshit you're doing wrong to expose what you're doing wrong. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear, oh, it's just this. It's not that bad. Uh, just one ice cream sandwich, you know? Yes, it's bad for you. And you need somebody to do that for you because you are not responsible. If you were responsible, you wouldn't go to a doctor because you're responsible. You want to learn what the doctor knows. Guess what? There's such thing as the internet. <gasps> you have the internet? And now I'm not saying to self-diagnose yourself and, and to self-prescribe. I'm not saying to do what the doctor does. I'm saying to take out the doctor entirely. You don't need a doctor if you're taking care of yourself and you're responsible. You don't need a doctor. Um, and if you do need help and something you don't understand, consult somebody who understands. But do not put yourself on a pill because the doctor says, well, your levels are here. We need you here. And this pill is designed to put you from here to here. So we're going to put you on the pill. Keep that recommended dose. And always remember to pick it up from the pharmacy. You change your lifestyle to hurt yourself. It's money out of your own pocket. I know what you guys are thinking. Well, my insurance pays for it. Okay, well, it's money out of someone's pocket. Someone's getting broke off of it, um, which I'm against. I'm against that whole industry. You guys know it. I'm an anarchist. I'm, a, I'm against stealing from someone and giving to another. That's or theft in general. Right. All right. I don't want this video to be for too long. I just wanted to expose this medical industry is designed to hurt us. It is designed as population control. It is designed to hurt us. My grandpa went in for uh, surgery, and a lot of times they'll say, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not a guaranteed surgery, blah, blah, blah. A lot of times they'll have you sign waivers. Sometimes you don't even know it's a waiver, but they'll, they'll have you sign things, especially if you're doped up. Uh, or I've, I've seen it happen. Not always that you're doped up and they're like, Hey, now's the time to sign this, but I have seen it. Um, but the point is I'm getting at is that if you think about it, this is an easy way of population control. Get everyone on, on vaccinations, get everyone on pills, get everyone sick, get everyone on masks. Tell people the the stay inside because if you go out, there's a virus and it's scary. So you don't need your vitamin D. Take your vitamin D pill, which is not going to be properly um, distributed throughout the body as like let's say the sun on your skin would, where 
it's something you can absorb and you can transfer that that radiation into vitamin D and use it properly throughout the body right but you're gonna take your vitamin D threes right don't do that get off the pills you don't need pills you don't need drugs you don't need open-heart surgery you need to fix your diet, you need to exercise, you need the, you need more oxygen, maybe you need to go on a little bit of a hike. Go on a hike once a week. Get your blood flow going. These are what you need. You don't need to be diagnosed with chronic pain and be put on a pill. You don't need to be diagnosed with diabetes type two and be put on insulin uh, and, and, and you're gonna be a customer for life. Why? Because you can't put the spoon down and you can't be responsible for taking out the chemicals out of your drinks. Now, of course, that's going to take higher intelligence, right? Uh, and dedication and motivation to find out the real information. You need to be vigilant. Yes, your, your levels are going to change, but a pill is going to disrupt your natural responses to that thing. I stopped taking chapstick 17 years ago, right? I stopped taking chapstick 17 years ago. I've never had chap lips since. Never. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Huh. I don't take pills. I don't get headaches. Huh. 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 I thought only pills can fix my headache. No moron. You're being brainwashed. Get off of this idea that this person spent 10 years in a medical industry so he knows what's best for you. How wrong could that be? They would only need to brainwash you for 10 years in order to brainwash you. See, if you went through the medical industry for two years and you realize, oh, this is just a drug-pushing agenda, and you realize that, guess what? You're not going to finish the other eight years. Of medical training right they want you to go through that ringer to make sure you play ball and you murder as many people as you can now am I saying doctors are pieces of shit no some of them legit probably can't think for themselves and they go by the book why because you can be fined if you don't you can lose your medical license if you don't follow the book if you don't murder your fucking patient, you can lose your medical license. Hmm. Hmm. And that medical doctor that murdered my grandpa back in 1993, that motherfucker still has his medical license. Are you starting to understand what's going on here? That motherfucker Gets to keep his medical license for murdering my grandpa. But if he cured my grandpa and kept him alive, and, and instead of making him a customer, cured him, he'd lose his medical license and be unable to work in this country. Huh. 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 I'm exposing this shit. Get out of the medical industry. Start taking care of yourself. Start being responsible. It's OPEX. I'm out. See you guys.